Although I appreciate this is her approach to ab training, I simply think there are better alternatives. So we're actually doing a bit of a comparison today. So we look at two content creators being Pamela Reef and Lean Beef Patty, because both of which have released 10 minute ab workouts. I thought it'd be a really good idea having a look at two creators I've spoken about before in kind of different contexts. One of which being Pamela, where I've very much spoken about surrounding home workouts and ab workouts, saying that I wasn't necessarily massively impressed with some of the stuff she was doing versus Lean Beef Patty, who's somebody who's quite resistance training heavy and somebody who I have actually expressed a big liking for regarding content. So that's what we're gonna tickle today. So we've got Pamela's 10 minute abs and pillow intense six pack workouts challenge your core strength and balance. So this could be an interesting comparison because it's gonna speak about not only the movement selected and how they're structured, but also how these videos are titled and why I think that needs to be considered. I'll give Pamela one thing. Every time she does a video, her location is just unreal. Like it's just such a good location to film in and I respect it. So starting off with a leg raise. Ultimately, yes, you can hold a pillow between your legs if you want to. Is it gonna work the abs any more effectively? Probably not. I mean, there's an idea that it could bring in the adductors a bit more because you're having to contract them to keep the legs close together. I think in this position, I would actually favor trying to go to weight if you can. But the thing with leg raises is due to the, the essentially lack of spinal flexion, they typically tend to be quite hip flexor dominant, which is something I have spoken about before when looking at Pamela's workouts. This one is, is slightly different as there is a slight bit of spinal flexion. As you can see, the sternum is getting closer to the pelvis. But again, it's probably not as much as you would like when you're really looking at targeting the abs. Again, this very much shifts a lot of emphasis over to the hip flexors, which are obviously not a muscle you're probably looking to place primary focus on when doing ab workouts. And a similar thing is occurring here. Again, there's minimal spinal flexion occurring, which means the distance between the sternum and the pelvis or the pelvis and the sternum is not really reducing that much, which again means that a lot of emphasis is gonna be placed back on the hip flex. But sure, you are gonna feel a lot of burning in the abdominal region, and you're actually gonna start feeling some questionable burning around the quads and kind of higher end quad lower ab region, but that is actually gonna be largely the, the hip flexors. I think movements like this could be made so much better is if you altered them slightly by either crunching up slightly, obviously, bringing in spinal flexion or reverse crunchy up slightly again bringing in spinal flexion and when we shift over to some more oblique dominant work which is largely going to be rotation based or anti-rotation based as well sure we are rotating as you would expect when doing an oblique movement but again due to the lack of resistance how effective is this movement actually going to be for the intended musculature being the obliques again you are going to get some abdominal burning because you're maintaining this tense position but again uh, i've said this many times i'll always repeat it just in case you may be new to the channel but just because you're hurting it doesn't necessarily mean you'll work it effectively. The key thing to note here is again, very consistent with a lot of Pamela's videos I have seen externally, is regardless of whether you choose to do this alone or paired with another video, the, the big thing that kind of holds this back is although it does say it's gonna challenge your core strength and balance, fine, I respect that, I appreciate that. The fact it's also targeted as an abdominal based workout, when it doesn't really take the, the primary muscles you're typically considering when thinking about the abdominal region, such as the rectus abdominis, through that active range of motion or a sufficient range of motion, that then limits how effective this workout is for the abdominal region itself. Plank variations and whatnot are fine, but again, they're not gonna promote the mass amount of hypertrophy. But then people say to me, but Harry, I'm not trying to get bigger abs. I want to get leaner abs. That's ultimately really gonna come down to body fat percentage. Again, my friend actually made a really good point about this. Abs or uh, any other muscle. We know that you should train them like any other muscle. Imagine if you trained other muscles like you would train your abs in this context. It's only gonna be so effective. And that effectiveness is further limited by the fact that a lot of these movements aren't actually placing as much emphasis on the abdominal region as you might think. But your abs don't know they're your abs. They just know what kind of stimulus they need to get bigger and stronger. I, I struggle to know why many people train their abdominal region so differently to how they would train other muscle groups. TFNL group coaching is obviously a thing and it's run through the Train Heroic app, which gives you options to work out at home or at the gym in which I am providing those programs for you. And a new one is due to start in the next few weeks. So that is always linked down below in the description and maybe even the comment section too. On top of that, the TFNL growth guide is obviously still a thing. That is a workout resource that includes 30 weeks of programming within it that is always again linked down below in the description and maybe even the comment section and there's actually a new home workouts guide which is an add-on to the growth guide coming out in the next few weeks as well so get ready for that and then we flip over to the lean beef patty video which is going to be a 10 minute ab workout to follow along beginner to advance lean beef patty I, i've expressed before i'm a big fan of lean beef patty and her workout content so i'm actually really looking forward to seeing what this is like as i expect it to be slightly different immediately the first thing we're going to do is obviously a reverse crunch variation and the, immediately the first difference 
you see is spinal flexion. You see how Lean Beef Patty is bringing her pelvis up to her sternum, which is obviously encouraging spinal flexion, which is exactly what we need to really take the abdominal region through that active range of motion to then provide that stimulus for growth and progression. Again, the bicycle crunch, I think, is, is an okay movement. It, it's a very hip flexor dominant again because there's not a lot of spinal flexion, but at least Lean Beef Patty is adding resistance. And that's one thing I really like to push when doing abdominal work. Just because you're working your abs doesn't mean you shouldn't use resistance. Again, treat them like any other muscle group. To then progress them and build them, you must progressively overload with them. And building your abs should not be demonized as it often is. People often say, I don't want to get big blocky abs. I don't want to build my abs too much. I look too thick. Ultimately, what are you trying to do with your abs? You're trying to get them more toned, defined, whatever it may be. That essentially inherits building them to some extent whilst also potentially losing body fat percentage as well to make them more visible. Again, even doing movements that I'm not massive fans of, like so, you can still see that she is trying to encourage spinal flexion, which is obviously that kind of rounding of the back, reducing the distance again between the sternum and the pelvis or the pelvis and the sternum. That's fantastic. That's really what we want to do. Whatever movement you do when you're looking at abs, most of them, I would say, should involve an element of spinal flexion. Even if there may be a typically a bit more hip flexor dominant, you can actually shift that dominance to making them slightly more favorable for the abs by implementing spinal flexion. Not a movement I'm a big fan of personally. It's again, it's a very hip flexor dominant movement. You can see she's obviously maintaining a bit of a crunch position to then get an element of spinal flexion, but I wouldn't say it's sufficient because it's not taking the abdominal region through a full active range of motion. You're simply maintaining tension whilst essentially working the hip flexor. That being said, at least resistance training and progressive overload is encouraged by implementing ankle weights. Again, Russian twist, just like Pamela. But again, you can see in the advanced version, Lean Beef Patty is now implementing weights, which is something I'm a big fan of. When implementing weights for Russian twists, I would try and minimize arm movement and maximize rotational movement and essentially trying to move that weight with the obliques rather than just putting the weight side to side with the arms or the delts. Because again, it's a rotation based movement, therefore you want to move that weight through rotation. A lot of people actually typically avoid training the obliques because it may give the illusion, due to the development of those muscles, of a slightly thicker waist. I'm not saying it will, I'm simply stating that due to the development of the obliques and where they sit on the body, typically being kind of the side of the abdominal region it can give the illusion of a thicker waist which is something a lot of people do want to avoid that being said i do think there's a lot of functional benefits to train the obliques for example if you deadlift or do similar movements with a mixed grip that may encourage some rotation and one of the primary functions of the obliques is anti-rotation so doing movements like the paloff press and things like that which are again anti-rotational movements may be quite beneficial when looking at potentially correcting or preventing muscular imbalances that may occur from mixed grip deadlifts or similar movements i think it's probably gonna throw some people off. When I first watched this video of Lean Big Patty and her ab workouts, I, I said to my friend, I was a bit disappointed. Although I appreciate this is her approach to ab training, I simply think there are better alternatives. And her approach of 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, sure may be appealing to a lot of people. Um, I don't think it's particularly necessary. I just typically treat ab training like I would treat training any other muscle group. That's usually sets and reps. You can time things, sure, but I do think it's really important if you are gonna time things that you track how many reps you do in that period. That being said, if you then have a limited window of 30 seconds, how many reps can you do in that 30 seconds? It's essentially to then progressively overload and do more reps, you may actually sacrifice quality because you're rushing the reps now and you can no longer standardize technique or tempo because if each rep takes you three seconds, you can only get a maximum of 10 reps within that 30 second period. To get more reps, you'll have to speed up, which could potentially reduce movement quality. Or you have to use progressive overload via the means of adding resistance, which is fantastic, but the reps may actually then slow down. So you're now limited to how many reps you can achieve within that 30 second window. So for that, I would typically say sets and reps would be my preferred approach personally. I think although some of these movements were fantastic and she was including a lot more spinal flexion than Pamela was in a lot of her movements, I do still think there are better movements out there. A simple crunch variation on the floor is fantastic and a reverse crunch variation is also fantastic. You really don't need to do a lot more than that. So it could be things like hanging leg raises, rope crunches, decline crunches, reverse crunches, regular crunches, things like that. Two sets of let's say five to six plus reps and then you're, you're pretty laughing. Just make sure you're resting a sufficient amount of time between sets and you're adding weight if you can whilst not sacrificing movement quality or technique and you should be in a really good spot. Do that a couple of times a week and 
you're sorted. That being said, this is why I want to bring in the title side of things. So obviously Pamela titled hers as like a 10 minute ab plus pillow, intense six pack workout. Somewhat misleading. At least Lean Beef Patty titled hers as a follow along beginner to advanced ab workout. Because I do think a lot of her movement suggestions, especially the earlier ones without resistance, could be a really effective means of beginners approaching ab training, especially if they're at home, which is a key thing to remember. And the advanced one being the, the additional resistance, I wouldn't necessarily label that as advanced. I just simply label that as like progressive overload essentially. But again, I think what Workouts like this, when you are limited to equipment and what you can use, are probably actually relatively effective within a home gym environment or within a home environment itself. But if you were to train at a gym, I would definitely change this quite drastically. Ab training doesn't need to be that complicated. Like I said, crunch variations are probably going to be your best friends, as will additional resistance and as will sufficient rest. It doesn't need to be too crazy. We're not worrying too much about biasing certain divisions. I mean, there's an argument that you could place greater emphasis on upper versus lower ab fibers based on if your sternum's getting closer to your pelvis, which is typically going to be more upper ab fiber dominant or your pelvis is getting closer to your sternum which they theorize may be more lower ab fiber dominant like i said when it comes to spotting a good ab workout you really do have to look at are the abs being trained like any other muscle group are you taking the abdominal region through its active range of motion which is going to be encouraging spinal flexion and will the movements being selected allow you to incorporate progressive overload especially through the means of additional resistance if you can tick those three boxes you've actually probably found yourself a pretty good ab workout and one i would likely probably recommend but now that's done we're very quickly going to talk about the comment question of the week. And this is in reference to the Liana Deeb video I did the other week, where we were talking about the squats and squat depth. This individual was basically stating how they were always taught not to squat too low and were to, told to limit their squat to 90 degrees, but Liana goes much deeper when she's doing squats, and they're wondering what the right depth is when performing a squat. Ultimately, the right depth is really up to you. If you're looking at targeting the quads, you ideally want to go as low as you possibly can and encourage as much knee flexion, so knee travel as possible, bend the knees as much as possible, essentially. If you want to target the glutes, you probably don't need to go as low, and you could probably limit your range of motion to about 90 degrees or so. That being said, this very much depends on your mobility allowances. If your mobility isn't fantastic, then you may find yourself struggling for depth, in which case go as low as you can go comfortably. Squatting deep is not bad for your knees. Knees traveling over the toes is also not bad for your knees. A lot of these myths and misconceptions surrounding squats and knee health have largely been binned. But that is it. That is video. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my oversimplified and probably underwhelming approach to ab training. And thank you for tolerating the video.